For over a decade, XRP has positioned itself as a backbone for global payments, but it was never exclusively designed for Wall Street. Canton was. That distinction changes everything. When institutions build the rails themselves, they don't adapt to public networks. They replace them. Most investors think this is just another XRP competitor. Canton isn't trying to be a public crypto network. It is building a private institutional standard. I'm Crux. In this video, I'm breaking down XRP versus Canton across 10 critical categories that actually matter to the institutions. One of these categories completely flipped my original bias, and most people overlook it. By the end of this, you'll know exactly where I'm placing my capital. Let's start with who these networks are actually built for. XRP targets the banks and the payment providers from the outside in. It offers a public ledger institutions can integrate without rebuilding internal systems, allowing them to test faster settlement and liquidity while keeping existing infrastructure intact. Now, Canton has the institutions involved from day one, defining the standards, governing the network, and adopting it as a shared internal rail, but specifically around control, privacy, and compliance. While the Canton token is new, the underlying technology isn't. Canton's core infrastructure has been in development and live with major financial institutions since 2014. So while XRP is something institutions integrate into, Canton is something institutions build themselves. That difference in who builds the network leads to two very different designs. XRP is built as a public settlement layer. Anyone can use it, interact with it, and validate transactions without the institutions. That openness is what enables global accessibility. Canton takes a fundamentally different approach. It is a permissioned network where access is restricted to vetted participants, and the design prioritizes security, privacy, and regulatory alignment over openness. When designing a network, institutions have two primary things in mind, privacy and regulation. XRP operates with transparency by default. Transactions are visible on a public ledger, while compliance is handled through additional layers. Whether that's moderating tools, integrations, or adding in privacy features on top when required, that approach allows regulators to audit activity. But Canton flips that model. Privacy is built into the base layer using zero-knowledge proofs, so sensitive data stays confidential by default while still remaining compliant. Regulation isn't something Canton adapts to later. It is woven into the framework from day one. Another stark difference is how do the institutions participate? Are they going to integrate into a public network, or are they going to build and govern one themselves? With XRP, banks and payment providers plug into the ledger through Ripple's ecosystem, using XRP for liquidity with tools like RLUSD helping streamline settlement and on and off ramps. Ripple's ecosystem includes hundreds of banks and financial firms, from Santander and American Express to Standard Charter and AWS. Ripple is also pursuing a regulated bank charter, allowing it to operate as a nationally supervised trust bank, and ETF traction has already started. Canton, by contrast, doesn't yet have a live ETF or look to become the next major bank. Its model centers on institutions acting as governors, co-building shared infrastructure they directly control and evolve over time. RISE Network is an intelligence and tokenization layer built on Canton whose ecosystem is anchored by the biggest names, including Goldman Sachs, BNY Mellon, HSBC, Society General, NASDAQ, DTCC, Microsoft, and more who are testing, building, and tokenizing real-world assets on the network. These are two huge projects with the biggest partnerships in all of crypto. Make sure to subscribe. These are the type of deep dives that I'm focused on sharing with you. Now, building a network raises a more important question. Control. Who decides how it evolves over time? Governance on the XRP ledger is handled by a decentralized validator set with independent nodes participating in consensus. While the network is community-driven, Ripple's validator roles and XRP holdings still give it meaningful influence over how the ecosystem evolves today. Canton's governance is handled directly by the institutions. Banks and financial firms running the network vote on protocol upgrades, rules, and changes on how data moves across the system. That model aligns decision-making with priorities and reduces reliance on any single entity because the network is governed by the same institutions who depend on it. None of this matters unless you can operate at scale and you can hold up in the real world. Which brings us to our next point, scalability and legal certainty. XRP delivers fast settlement through its consensus mechanism, RPCA, finalizing transactions in seconds. It operates in a public environment 
where enforceability varies across jurisdictions, which means institutions often need legal agreements and compliance layers to manage risks. Canton Settlement is built around existing legal frameworks with finality that aligns directly with traditional contract law. That gives institutions clear enforceability, lower risk, and more confidence that outcomes translate into the real world. Canton uses a proof-of-stake permission BFT consensus model, which also settles in seconds. Now, in Ripple's ecosystem, network value is tied directly to the XRP token. So as usage for payments and liquidity goes up, so does the demand for the token. That means performance is tied to transaction volume and the supply dynamics, including Ripple's escrow releases, which institutions have factored into their exposure. Just over half of XRP's fixed supply is already in circulation with the rest released from escrow on a transparent schedule. 100% of the supply has already been minted and has no inflation, supply is capped, and fees are burned. Ripple controls around 41% of XRP tokens while being floated as a potential $50 billion IPO. Canton takes a different path and has no fixed supply. Canton coin is not pre-mined or VC allocated. It is earned based on real network activity by validators, builders, and users. That makes CC supply usage driven with rewards tied to utility rather than price speculation or preset unlocks. The environment institutions plug into matter, which brings us into our next segment, ecosystem growth. XRP is built into a much broader ecosystem. It benefits from deep liquidity from exchanges, integrations with wallets, and connections to DeFi platforms that extends its use cases beyond traditional payments. That drives adoption across the wider crypto market, giving XRP exposure to innovation happening outside of legacy finance. Canton is intentionally narrower. Its ecosystem is built around deep commitment, focused on asset tokenization, private markets, and enterprise-grade financial workflows among a smaller group of major players. XRP focuses on broad ecosystem reach and liquidity, Canton focuses on building fewer but more tightly integrated connections. Ecosystem size matters more and networks can actually talk to each other. Which brings us to our next segment, interoperability. XRP approaches interoperability as a bridge asset. Its role is to connect different networks and currencies, moving value between blockchains and existing fiat systems, acting as a neutral intermediary. That is the logic behind XRP's integration, protocols like Interledger, where the goal is global liquidity routing, rather than replacing existing systems. Instead of bridging across networks, Canton consolidates them, using a shared ledger to break down silos from the inside. By synchronizing data and assets within a unified environment, Canton enables workflows across institutions without exposing sensitive information to the public. From a valuation standpoint, the gap is massive. Canton is valued around $5 billion, XRP is sitting close to $145 billion market cap. That nearly 29x difference makes it hard for me to give the edge to XRP on pure upside alone, especially when the institutions behind Canton are on the same tier. From an asymmetric risk-to-reward perspective, Canton clearly stands out. That being said, when I zoom out and weigh everything together, I'm giving the overall win to XRP. It has a fixed supply, an open network that developers can actually build on, it's more decentralized, and most importantly, a proven track record that already stood the test of time and against the SEC. If this breakdown brought you any value, make sure to subscribe for more content like this. And give Pup Tux a like. He's been sitting through way too many institutional board meetings. If you want to go deeper than YouTube, I break down this kind of analysis in real time inside WAP. That is where I share ongoing portfolio positioning, trade setups when they make sense, and how I'm tracking narratives like this as they evolve through 2026. There are different paths depending on how hands-on you want to be, from portfolio frameworks to live trading sessions. Use my affiliate link below to help support this channel. If you want to keep going, check out my Render vs. Tau breakdown next. And tell me in the comments, are you more aligned with Ripple or with Canton? I'll see you in the next breakdown.